Hello everyone. Today I will be talking all things bow. The bow is very important for playing an instrument correctly and I want to make sure you know how to hold it right, care for it correctly, and maybe a little history on the bow. You really don't know exactly where the bow started or when the bow started being used on an instrument, but we have pictures. And here's a, a painting from the 1500s. You see the beautiful angel playing uh, an instrument with a bow. It looks very much like an archer's bow, like a bow that you would use with arrows for hunting. So we think that maybe it started around there. This picture shows the evolution of the bow. Right here is a, the way the bow looked in the picture I just showed you. And you'll see the stick gets longer as time goes by. The hair gets a little further away from the stick. And then it gets even longer. And then gets a little closer and we're developing a frog that moves. So. Here's this bow that you use for today on your violin, your cello, your viola. If you're interested in learning how a bow is made, there's a website you can go to, a YouTube website, uh, www.youtube.com slash Johnson Strings. And if you go to that site, you'll see um, on the top, it'll say videos. And there are lots of videos there on how to bow and how to play the instrument. And you'll see lots of examples of great violin playing, viola playing, cello playing. And uh, underneath videos, look for the video that says how a bow is made. And it'll show you all the parts where they come from around the world. So it's quite interesting if you're, if you're interested in that kind of thing. All right, care of your bow. First of all, if you see over here in my case, my violin is uh, open and the bow is locked in. Also, the bow is very loose. I always want to loosen the bow before I put it away. And then I tighten it when I'm ready to play. And I tighten it about enough for my small, my pinky to fit through. If you're a cello player, you want to make sure you keep your bow in the case. Most of you have soft cases. So this case is the bow. We take the bow out first when we're unpacking and we place it on the stand or wherever we're going to be practicing. And then at the end of our practice, we pack up the case and the bow goes in last. That way you don't have a crumpled case and your bow is not trying to find its way in and out of the case. It's straight up and down like that. All right, so we're back to our bow and I've tightened the bow and now I'm going to add a little bit of rosin. Rosin comes in lots of different shapes and sizes and you have a light rosin and here I have a darker rosin and I like these cases. This one's a plastic case so if you drop it it won't break hopefully. Sometimes the rosin breaks like glass into lots of little pieces and here I have a wooden case for the rosin. This is a lighter rosin. Rosin comes from tree sap um, mostly pine tree, and then every company has their own special mixture of making rosin. So I rosin the bow from frog to tip a couple times. And um, depending on how much you practice, you can rosin it every day or I'd rosin it every couple days. I don't give rosin out to first year students just because it breaks so easily and I just want to make sure you understand how to take care of your instrument correctly before we give you rosin. But all your teachers have rosin, you can ask to use theirs when they'll put some on there for you. If there's too much rosin, sometimes the rosin comes off like a powder. That means you've been putting too much rosin on it and it becomes very sticky. Rosin's put on the bow to make it stick to the string, but you don't want to put too much rosin on it or you're going to have a hard time bowing. And uh, so when you're done at the end of the day, rosin starts as a solid. And then when you rub it on the bow, that's friction. There's a science word for today, friction. And then it turns it into a powder. But eventually that powder will land on the bow stick here or on your instrument. So you wanna use a nice soft cloth, wipe down the instrument, wipe down the bow because that powder will turn back into a, a hard a chemical or hard hardening on your instrument and on your bow. So you wanna wipe that powder off. Otherwise it gets a little too hard to cut off. All right, so we talked about the care. Carrying the bow, when I'm not using the bow, I stick my finger through the frog area and this is the way I carry the bow. 
and violins, your violin is under your bow arm, same. Cellos have this arm free to carry their cello, but you don't want the bow sticking up like this or out in front, poking people up above or going through a door sideways. That's a good way to break your bow and you've paid a lot of money for the bow, so you wanna make sure you keep it in good shape. So this is the way I would carry a bow when I'm not using it. When you're in play position, that's the way your bow should be held. All right, I have some parts of the bow, but let's review. You should know your parts. The tip of the bow is called the tip, and the stick of the bow is called the stick. And then this leatherette piece here, sometimes it's silver, uh, is called the grip or the winding, and that protects the stick from wearing away. You've paid a lot of money for it. You wanna make sure you keep it in good shape. And then you have the end screw. This is the frog. The silver parts, the ferrule. Under here is the slide. A couple more parts that you may not know. And then, of course, the hair. You want to keep the hair as clean as possible. Now I have some parts here to show you. I've taken the bow apart. Here's the stick again. You see a nice curve in there. And the tip is missing. That's the thinnest part of the bow, and that's usually where it breaks if you drop it too many times. So you want to keep from dropping it. And then I've kept the winding on here. Here's the hole that the frog fits into. So I have a frog here that uh, has its uh, screw out and you see the eyelet that the screw goes into and that fits right into the hole like so. And then you can go back and forth tightening the frog moves along the stick with that hole. This one, the ferrule has fallen off, so this is what a ferrule looks like. Here's a bigger frog. And you see how when I unscrew, the frog starts to move down the stick. And when I screw it back in, the frog moves back up the stick. Now, if you don't loosen the bow every day, you end up with a frog that might crack. This one's cracked. This one also has cracked, all right? So you don't want to keep it tight. That's too much tension to constantly be that tight. So you don't want that to happen. And then you'll see here on the tip, this one's a base tip and it's broken off at the thinnest part again. Underneath the hair is the plug right there. And this violin, this is the plug. You see it falls right out. It's just a small piece and then the hair plugs in or pops in there and then the plug pops inside to hold it in. So this falls out a lot when students tap their bow too much on the floor or on the stand. And um, then uh, also if you drop it a lot. If you drop your bow a hundred times and nothing happens, you just like, you don't think about it, but then the hundred and tenth time it drops and the hair falls out and the plug falls out like this and you're surprised that it doesn't, uh, that the hair fell out. You're like, I just dropped it. and But you may have dropped it many more times than that or banged it up against something. And that constantly loosens the plug and then the hair falls out. So that's how you take care of making sure that your bow doesn't break. All right, let's see. The bow hold. So I have my bow here. And what I do is I ask students to make a C or a bunny rabbit. Um, you curve your second finger around the thumb, right there, the inside, and the thumb's bent, nice and, nice and rounded. And I place the thumb here, and the second finger follows over. You can place it further down, but I like it here. Third finger comes in next, pinky on top, and then your first finger sits on its side. And you're holding your bow with your right hand. And then sometimes I'll start higher in the bow. The bow has a nice place where it balances, the balance point, right about there for me on this bow. And you can put your, your bow hold there and it feels very, very comfortable. There's not a lot of tension on your fingers. And then eventually move it on down. This is where my beginners play. And then when you become more advanced, you put your thumb inside. And that way you're controlling the stick much, much better. All right, for a cello bow hold, I ask cellists to hold their hands up, and you'll see these first knuckles here. I just place the bow across the knuckle, 
like so. And then the thumb fits in somewhere between the second and third finger where it's comfortable. Pinky hangs over, all the fingers hang over, and you see you have a nice square bow hold. All right, so violins tend to be more angled because the bow is at an angle. You need to balance all of that. Cellos, bass players, a little more like this because the bow is held against, coming against the body, you don't want it to fall, so that's why. So we have a cello bow hold, violin bow hold, and viola. Sorry, violas, I don't know why you always get left out. Viola bow hold. All right, everything's curved, nice and relaxed. You see that my fingers are able to move nicely. I can tap all my fingers, tap, tap, tap. Everything's rounded and curved. Good, I have a couple pictures to show you. This picture, see you know, how the thumb is bent, the violin bow hold, cello, violin viola bow hold, cello and bass. A few more pictures. Here's a good bow hold. She's a little higher up in the bow, but her pinky is nice, nice and solid on top. Here's another bow hold. Everything looks really relaxed and curved. Here's a good cello bow hold. Fingers are hanging over. And one more. This bow holds at the frog. All right, so a couple of games that you can do at home, exercises that I like to do with students. Uh, first one is uh, thumb crunches. Just bend your thumb, crunch, 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 crunch. Good, and you can do this with a bow if you have a bow at home. Uh, if you don't have a bow at home, you can still do these on a pencil. This is a great way to practice. You can show it to your siblings, teach someone in the house, uh, an auntie or your dad or your mom, uncle, cousin, whoever's there. You can use the bow, pencil like a bow. Or if you've got some time to make one, you know, I have a, a stick, dowel stick, with an eraser on the end, not, not anything too heavy. And I made one like that. So you could do any of these things with the bow, with a pencil, or a homemade bow. And then, um, so I started with the thumb crunches. That was the one where you bend the thumb, make sure it's bent. All right, another one is a windshield wiper. Keeping the pinky bent on top. Here's one for the cellos, same thing. All right. Oh, a spider walk. Up and then down. And the way you can do this. All right, so the thumb goes up the stick first, then the fingers. Thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers. And then back down, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb. A great exercise. You can also teach this to anybody in the house and have spider races with them. You can do it on a pencil. Uh, let's see, uh, pinky push-ups. You take the bow and you bring it down with the pinky curved and you just push slightly. And that will strengthen all of that in here, all those muscles. Same thing with the cello. Rest to play, rest to play. You can time yourself how many of these you can do in 30 seconds and then the next day try to beat that time. There's also pizzicato where you pluck the string to play, pizzicato to play, all right? And that's an important one because sometimes in music you'll have pits, 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 rest, 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 play, play, play. And you don't have very much time to get from one bow motion to the other bow motion. Uh, through the ring, have someone just create a circle for you, or um, I had a can, oh, somewhere. Oh, here it is. This is the top of a can I put on a handle. And you just see if you can take the bow and go through it without touching, and then back down. And how many times can you do that before you hit the side? Um, pass the cup, I've got lots of different cups, small cup. Pass it on to someone else. You can do this with a pencil, but you always have to have a good bow hold. Here's a bigger cup. Pass it with a good bow hold. Pass it around. See how many people can pass it back and forth before it drops. 
These are all things you can do at home while you're waiting for school to start again. Please remember that um, we're thinking about you and we want you to keep growing and learning. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll see what we can talk about then. Bye.